Good morning. My homily for today is Stopping Truth Decay. The body they may kill, God's truth abided still. These words from Martin Luther's hymn that we just sang really resonate with my theme today. They were written by Martin Luther in about 1510, who stood up to the Roman, Holy Roman Emperor and the Roman Catholic Church and won. To me, there's a certain similarity what's happening in the Ukraine today. We have President Zelensky standing up to, and, and, and his, his fellow Ukrainians fighting for their freedom and standing up and dying uh, against the uh, outnumbered, uh, who are, they're greatly unnumbered by the, the Russians and still fighting valiantly on, as did in the same spirit that Martin Luther did in 1510. I need to, and I'm uh, assisted today by my daughter, Emily Carr Osborne, and my granddaughter, Emily Carr Osborne. Karen. Karen, uh, uh, Karen Carr Osborne, yes. So I'm going to uh, ask, I have some, uh, let me just do, I'm going to do just a minute here. I, I need to, uh, oh, next. Okay. They'll now, they'll now be uh, uh, reading the, uh, the, the, the scripture. John 8, 31. <clears throat> then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Well, our founding father, George Washington, took these words to heart. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. And he put it this way, truth will ultimately prevail when plans are taken to bring it to light. So Karen, my granddaughter Karen, well, is here today and I wanna ask her when she first learned about the story of George Washington and the cherry tree. Well, I learned about that story when I was about in first grade and um, I learned that George Washington got a brand new ax and he wanted to try it out. So he went outside and he cut down his father's cherry tree. But then when his father asked him if he had cut down the cherry tree, he said, I cannot tell a lie. And he told the truth. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. What about the story about the boy who cried wolf? Where did you learn? When and where? What's that story? When did you learn it? Well, I learned that one around the same time. And that one is also about truth because um, the boy who cried wolf, he Every day he would cry wolf and all the people would come running to help save his sheep from the wolf. But then one day when there was actually a wolf, none of the townspeople believed that there were, that he was telling the truth because after lying so much, they lost trust in him and they didn't think he was telling the truth. So all of his sheep died because he was um, not telling the truth. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Let's go on to some of our other founding fathers, our, our great president, uh, 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 Abraham Lincoln. I am a firm believer in the people. If given the truth, they will, can be depended on to meet any national crisis. The great point is to bring them the real facts. And then our former president, uh, 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 Obama, if we get into the habit of bending the truth to suit our political expediency or party orthodoxy, our democracy will not work. There are some things that are worth 
uh, risking everything for principles that are eternal, truths that are abiding. And this was at uh, his obituary for Senator John McCain in the Washington National Cathedral. We all sadly remember that maybe the person who needed to hear this the most was excluded by the, by the wish of John McCain. Getting back to uh, uh, our earlier history, Benjamin Franklin said after the first, uh, I think it was the Constitutional Convention, we have given you a republic if you can keep it. And we, on January 6th, our, our, our republic was indeed threatened. And then he also said after signing the Declaration of Independence, let's hang together or we'll hang separately. Nathan Hale, before uh, Karen remembers this, you might like to remember that you might that you might like to read this, Karen, or share this with mm -hmm. us. Karen remembers this. Um, that Nathan Hale, he was uh, actually a school teacher, but in the American Revolution, he was a spy, and he was captured by the British. And when he was hung, his last words before he died was, "My only regret is that I only have one life to lose for my country." I personally am deeply concerned about those who want freedom without responsibility and for preserving the freedom for which many Ukrainians have died as Ukrainians that they're doing. And, and there are now over uh, 3 million Ukrainian refugees who are, who are suffering for their, their freedom. And when I see these, uh, particularly these women and children on TV, it may, brings back sad memory of my first wife, Karen. who was herself a refugee at age five in 1945. She fled with her mother and four siblings from East Germany before the Russian armies advanced that ended World War II. Karen's father, Fred Hansen, was in a distant lab working on the German radar and it took many years. Um, they, they fled and lived in an abandoned farmhouse in Bavaria after a few years, they were able to, uh, to, to hook up and rejoin their father, uh, and they eventually uh, immigrated to the United States. So uh, what's worse than lying to others, Karen? Well, lying to yourself is even worse than lying to others, because sometimes you might want to lie to yourself to make yourself believe what is not true. And to make yourself believe that what you did is not so bad, but you need to face the truth. And sometimes that is hard to face. Here's another statement, lying to yourself. It's easier to see others lying to themselves than to confront the fact that we often lie to ourselves. It's called self-justification and rationalization. This is to avoid the pain of cognitive dissonance. And Jesus said, hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with a speck in your friend's eye. Truth that liberates us from opinions and prejudice is divine love, agape love. Uh, many of us remember uh, Frank Papandreou's sermon at our Manatee UU Fellowship back in November. He called it Know Yourself. And he shared that when he was searching for his soul, month, he discovered that uh, he, that, that, that his companions also had low self-worth. And he, he noticed that his own self-worth was similar. After he worked on raising his own self-worth by meditation and soul searching, he was able to mate and form a satisfying relationship. Love your neighbor as yourself. By loving and knowing yourself, you can better love and relate to others. This is a... A uh, cartoon that got my attention as a scientist. Here we have politics uh, pushing scientific truth uh, way out, as you can see. Sad commentary and truth and uh, the idea of uh, political interests pushing out scientific truth. Many of us remember Al Gore's book, An Inconvenient Truth, a global warming for, about global warming. Truth is often inconvenient. 
it's difficult. Uh, uh, Upton Sinclair said it's difficult to a man to understand something when his salary depends on his not understanding it. I think that might apply to many people who walk for work for uh, fossil fuel companies. Scientific truth about COVID vaccination is inconvenient for some. The scientist Neil deGrasse Tyson tells us the good thing about science is it's true whether you believe it or not. Well, now I want to um, share a little bit about this article about how to keep from fake news drowning our democracy. This was published uh, uh, March 2nd in, in, uh, recently in the New York Times. Two thirds of America get their news from social media, which are not as accurate as traditional media. Traditional media hire editors and professionals who describe both sides. That's something to look out for. Academic journals are selected by an editor after, being, after having been re reviewed by at least one professional referee. More accurate traditional media have trouble surviving as social media gets 90% of the advertising money, which is a problem. The fake news crisis, bots and propagandists are just part of the problem. The bigger nature is our human, the bigger problem is our human nature. We're susceptible to believing dubious claims and playing a role in spreading them. And propagandists know that you, if you tell a lie enough times, people will eventually believe it. Fake news flies faster. That was the result of an MIT study that said that Twitter falsehoods sometimes spread six times faster than the truth. Researchers at the MIT School, Sloan School also determined that sensational false claims were likely to elicit feelings of surprise and distress. When you're so outraged at a falsehood that you share it with our friends, and I have to admit I, I do this myself at times, but we're unintentionally spreading the lie. We don't believe it, but we still are, you know, are so outraged that we, we have to talk about it. So it's good to go to web pages like factcheck.org before you tell friends about an outrageous story. Kittens, outrage, and fear are the best ways to engage folks on the web. I've never happened this, unfortunately this never happened to me and I don't think Karen or Emily, they don't think so either, but they say, they tell me that when you click on an endearing kitchen, it generally leads to a fake news but credible extremist website and forwarded something that is outrageous, one is an unintentionally pretending what is actually misinformation. So as I'm, as I, in summary, discern truth, discerning truth in our media with its fake news, make sure that it's edited and never trust a single source. Fight falsers from flying faster. Whenever we re re repeat a sensational, emotional fake news, we become part of the problem. We all need to remember that, including myself. Discover your true, lovable self. So in Stopping Truth Decay, uh, Karen will summarize here. Um, in John 8, 32, it says, you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So thank you. Rid of this somehow. <laughs>